What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. A few weeks back, I partnered with AlterX to host a webinar centered all around data analytics. And we brought on other data analytics managers who kind of broke into the field. And we basically talked about our stories and we got asked a lot of different questions about skills, tips and tricks for other people who are trying to get into the field. And their answers were phenomenal. I mean, a lot of them were just very unique and different than what I had said on my channel. And so, you know, I wanted to share that webinar with you guys because I just really think it was extremely useful. The actual webinar itself was about an hour long. And so I tried to trim it to under 20 minutes because I didn't want it to be, you know, just a really long thing uh, to watch. And so I've kind of cut it down to just the highlights and I'm gonna post the timestamps below so that you can kind of skip around to the different questions that you find interesting. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Alterex. They were absolutely fantastic to work with. Thank you guys so much for putting this all together. You guys are genuinely amazing. And without further ado, let's jump into the webinar. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how we got started in our analytics career. Um, and we'll just kind of go around and kind of share our stories and then we'll have lots of other questions and polls uh, later on as well. So I'm gonna to toss it over to Nicole. Uh, Nicole, if you wanna start us off uh, and tell us how you got into analytics. Yeah, sure, thanks Alex. Um, so as far as how I got started in analytics, um, I think it's going to be a, a similar story to my guess is a bunch of people on this, this call today, uh, definitely didn't start out on that path. Um, I come from a finance and accounting background Then, in a series of random, you know, events, I ended up working at a construction company as a project accountant. Uh, so not typically what you think of when you think of data. And I think for me, the turning point was really, um, I was working with a colleague and he was stuck on something in Excel. And he says, I'll give a thousand dollars to whoever can figure this out. And, you know, joking around said, okay, sure. I'll take that back to my desk and see if I can figure it out. And I actually did figure it out and I did not get a thousand dollars. I think I got like a nice bottle of wine and a big thank you. Uh, but for me, it was, you know, realizing that this was something fun. Like I liked solving these puzzles. I liked coming up with these different solutions to things. And uh, for me, it really just opened up a lot of doorways. Um, I continued in construction for a few more years, uh, moving into kind of an IT data analyst role. And then eventually uh, networked with some folks from T-Mobile at an Alteryx conference. Um, they were looking for someone who spoke the language of accounting and finance, but also had that Alteryx experience and wanted to help grow the usage of Alteryx throughout the accounting department. And I honestly don't think it could have been a better job for me if they'd said, like, you have to be named Nicole Johnson to have this job. <laughs> like, it couldn't have been a better fit. Um, so for me, I was able to leverage, you know, my, my finance and accounting background um, and then also play around in Alteryx all day long, meeting new people, working on new projects, solving new challenges. And so it's it's been a strange journey, um, but really cool to end up doing something I love every day and just getting to solve problems. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, I think the biggest thing while I was listening to that was I was like, you know, it's really interesting because you still got to use your accounting background, but you're using just how you use the numbers and everything in a different way. Uh, and, you know, that's fantastic because that's something that a lot of people who are getting started, you know, they're like, I have a degree in this. How on earth do I make that transition to analytics? Uh, you know, and using that degree or that background is usually a, kind of a good way to go. Exactly. Helps you find your little niche. Yeah, yeah. For, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to Sarah uh, and, you know, let us know how you made that transition. And so in my time off, I decided to get married and have a family and that didn't work out. So as a single mom, I started working at Blue Cross in customer service. Uh, I was scared to make that move out of customer service. I had a good stable job. Um, I was able to do a lot of project work that kept me challenged mentally. So why would I risk it by moving to a different position? Uh, but I finally had the right people leader who saw all of this work that I was doing. Um, I was doing project work such as working on our interweb sites. Um, building websites, building SharePoint sites, doing design work that was not related to customer service at all, very technical work. And it was all things that I was learning on my own how to do. Uh, so she encouraged me to not look at the titles for positions because I was really scared of the titles saying, I'm not qualified for those. Within two weeks of that conversation with her, 
I took the position of a project program coordinator. That one leader, I thank her every year when that comes <laughs> up in my Facebook memories about getting that position. I reach out to her and I tell her that she made that impact. And I don't want her to forget that I think of her all the time for the impact that she made in my life. Uh, I guess I'll share next. Um, so I'm Alex Freeberg um, and my uh, journey into data analytics is very similar to both of you in the fact that uh, I started out in a totally different field. I was in uh, healthcare. And so I started off um, at an internship out in Texas at a behavioral health hospital working with people with like PTSD and, and severe depression and bipolar. And so like, you know, working with those people doing therapy. Um, and it was just an internship and my internship was about to end, but I just met this girl and I wanted to marry her. And so I was like, I got to stay in Texas because I was about to move back to South Carolina. And so I found this job um, at a nonprofit doing like caretaker work, so helping with their day-to-day -day needs. And um, I wasn't making much money, but I, I really worked hard and I got um, an opportunity to apply for this job. It was called a data collection specialist and analyst. Had no idea what it was at all, but I knew I was good with Excel uh, and I applied and it turned, and they, I got the job. Uh, later I found out I was the only person that applied. Um, but, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was really happy that I got it, but it was only working in Excel. So no other tech skills or anything like that. But I learned about data collection and submitting things for grants and, and you know, creating like metrics and stuff like that. Um, and we were implementing a Salesforce, um, uh, a Salesforce um, data collection uh, a process over there. And the guy who we brought in to consult us was like, hey, you're the data guy over here. You must know SQL. And I was like, what is SQL? I've never heard of that in my life. Um, and he looked at me like, like I was just, I didn't, ha you, you don't know what you're talking about, which he was right. Um, but I went home that night and I looked up what SQL was and I started just like obsessing over SQL and I learned it as quick as I could. And after about six months after that, I, I took my first job as a data analyst um, at a, and using my healthcare background, I got a job at a healthcare analytics company. And so um, much like both of you, I kind of stayed in a, a similar, I used that background knowledge that I had from my previous careers and I used that to my advantage. I don't think any other industry would, would have taken me at all. Um, I, I was mostly <laughs> brought in for a little bit of my healthcare experience, but if I had tried to go into like finance, uh, like, like you or accounting or anything, uh, they would never hire me. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, kind of my story. It's very unconventional, but the same thing with all three of us is none of us started out in analytics. None of us have a degree in data analytics or data science or any of those things. Uh, and so I like that because I think most people, or there's a large majority of people out there who are wanting to become data analysts, but they have those unconventional degrees and they're like, how on earth will I make that change? I'm going to start it off with Nicole again. Um, but what has been like the biggest factors that have helped you been uh, be a good analyst? A question is always a little tricky for me to answer because um, I feel like so much of it was really just right place, right time, or maybe even more so like right attitude, right time. Um, right. But I think for me, it was a little bit of just being willing to take on a new job, even when I love the one that I had. Um, and so I think, you know, along with that, really just the willingness to learn new things, um, answering, you know, do you know how to do this with not yet, not no, you know, so like I, I definitely didn't know a lot about, you know, SQL or big data systems or, or really just, you know, corporate processes. Um, and that was OK because I was willing to learn it and really interested in making it fun along the way. And I think that fun element is important, too. I love all of that. That's fantastic. I mean, you're just hustling, you're grinding, and you're you're you know not giving up. Uh, that that kind of attitude yeah, is definitely definitely a big factor. What about you, Sarah? You know, having that one manager was was a big thing for me um, because you know she she believed in me and she gave me the confidence to move forward. Some of the things that really helped kind of fuel. Um, my career, though, is that passion, that excitement, loving what I do, and that really does keep you going. Even when your job isn't the most fun, it's that 
you can find the fun in what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to sound like a broken record because I'm going to say a somewhat similar thing to what you guys said. But but I'm just I glanced over at the results and I know we're going to look at these later. I shouldn't be doing this. But there is zero percent for formal education. And so, you know, as as our stories we just talked about, about how formal education wasn't really the biggest factor of getting into it. That's just really interesting. So so like when I was first starting out, I hadn't I didn't have anything right i didn't have uh any background any information i just had to hustle and grind every single day um and i fell in love with it luckily um and so i think that passion and that just absolute willingness to continually learn and and just um you know study as much as you can and learn the new skills and and find things that will solve the problems that you're trying to solve you know, those are the things that uh, I found to be the most successful. This question is, how have you saved time, learned new skills, or had greater impact? You know, really good at taking that formal path and saying, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to learn Python. And then they'll go find a course and then they'll go take all the, the lessons and they'll figure it out. And I have just not ever really been great at that. Um, I think probably like 95% of my on-the-job education is probably from Google. Uh, and so for me, it's about asking questions because I like to connect the dots between things. And so for me, I ask a lot of questions from people that I'm working with about things that probably don't have any real bearing on what I'm trying to build for them in Alteryx or what I'm trying to, um, do as, as far as a project goes. Um, but what I do get from that is understanding how like this process impacts something upstream or downstream. Um, how do these, these different pieces connect together? Um, have I uh, learned something from another project that might help this team out? Or can I take something from this project and help another team out? And so for me, it's about connecting the dots and, and asking questions to learn more about like what people are doing. Any process that I have found that works, that is a good process, or um, lately, well, for the past few years, I've been doing a, a, a deep dive into our new claims processing system and the data involved with that, working closely with the business to really um, identify the data definitions. It saves time, not only when it comes to building new reports, but also when bringing new people into the business that we can share those resources. I completely agree. And there's that's something that I think is really, um, I won't say undervalued, it's just not as talked about in the data world is documentation. So like creating data dictionaries and, 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 and processes and procedures and documenting this thing, crazy important, but they don't get the love they deserve. I like to, to learn from somebody, whether that's in person or a course or something. So I'm kind of the opposite of Nicole. I like to like take a course, learn it quick. But you know, things like things that I found the most helpful and most impactful in my career at least are things like the data prep and the data cleaning, like the ETL side of things. That has been like my bread and butter, you know. So like learning those skills and um, you know, taking those courses and doing those things, that's that's kind of where I think I would I would say like the, the, where I've been learning the most, uh, where I've had the most impact on my career. This uh, next question is, what advice would you give someone just out at, starting out in their analytics career? I'm excited for this one because I think you will all have some pretty good answers on this one. Uh, Nicole, I'm going to toss this one over to you. Focus on um, learning things and finding your finding your niche, finding those, you know, ways that you can take your background, whether, you know, you used to be a circus performer or whether you used to work at a bank or whether you used to walk dogs for a living. I mean, you can find so many connections between your passions and the things that you've, you know, done in your, your prior life, your prior career, and find ways to turn those into, you know, advantages when it comes to your analytics career. And, um, and then I think that the other really important thing um, is to find your people and whether that's the people who are going to mentor you and support you and, and help lead you in the right direction, um, but also the people that you can show and tell stuff to that are going to be really stoked about what you built. So it's less about the skills. You will get those. Practice makes perfect. Um, but how are you going to really leverage your other strengths and the people around you to really push yourself forward. One of the things that uh, one of the male managers in the room was telling us was that we needed to advocate for ourselves more. And mm -hmm. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> um, but after it was explained to me, 
I started looking at what I was doing on the service desk and I started looking at the reporting I was doing and I was like, wait a second, reporting isn't in my job description. <laughs> and I went to my boss and I said, hey, I'm doing this, this and this that has to do with data and that's not in my job description. And he's like, you're right. <laughs> and I got my first promotion. Start looking for things that you could do to push you in the direction you want to go with your career. If you're interested in data and analytics, look and see if there's something that you can add to your current job that might allow you to move more towards that direction. I absolutely agree. I love that last one. That's what I tell a lot of people as I'm like, I'm like, look, you know, you do this obscure job over here, but I, I guarantee you, you can find a way to leverage that or use that to become more data analytics focused. Like I, I know you can. I think my biggest piece of advice is to really focus in on domain knowledge. I think domain knowledge is something that a lot of people don't think about. They think, oh, if I just, if I know SQL and I know Python or I know Alteryx or Tableau, like, like if I know the tools, I can get a job. And that, that is true to some level, but uh, you know, for jobs that even I hire for or I've hired for in the past, you know, I really focus on the domain knowledge. I need somebody who knows the healthcare industry well. If you don't know it, no, if you don't know it, it's really hard. It's I find that that's harder to teach sometimes than actually teaching the technical skills. You know, first one off the bat, how hard is it to enter the market for data analytics? And should fresh grads worry? Um, you know, what's the market look like today for jobs? I think it's pretty competitive. Um, I think that. A lot of people are trying to get into this career because you can work remote. Um, there's usually pretty good pay. Um, there's you know, the, the ability, there's a lot of flexibility usually. And so there's a lot of good factors of trying to get into the market. And so I think right now is a unique time where there's a lot of people who are trying to get into, like you said, there's a large increase in demand and there's a large increase in people wanting to get in. Um, and so, you know, Take that with a grain of salt. Every every area and every place and different domains have different um, demands. But as a whole, it's it's more challenging than it was five years ago. I think there are a ton of jobs. I yeah. I think we're lacking in a lot of senior level people right now. What's more important, maybe, to put on your resume or or to look for in a job? Certifications are great, but it's sort of that same argument is like, do you really need to go to four years of college and get a degree in the field that you're going to end up in? And if that was true, then none of us would be doing what we're doing right now because we didn't go to school for those things. Because some people are just really good at taking tests, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can apply those skills and that they can actually use them to make an impact in that business. Don't get me wrong. I, I love learning and I love school, um, but I don't have a college degree. I don't have a bunch of certificates. I don't have any letters after my name, but I am very marketable and I can tell great stories and I have spoken at many conferences and I do a lot of webinars, necessarily the same resume as somebody else. Uh, from Isaac here, it says a big worry for many is that their college education and whatever else they have simply can't compete with computer science graduates. Uh, from what you all are seeing, how flexible is the market for self-taught people with a well-built out portfolio? And I know Alex mentions it on his YouTube channel, um, you know, that that might be important to have, but what are your thoughts on that? I think you can be just as competitive as somebody who has a degree um, in data science, data analytics, something like that, with a non-traditional background. Um, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people and typically the education is something that really is not a huge factor in the end. So the person with the portfolio is going to be a lot easier to sell themselves because they can point directly to the actual work that they've done um, and talk through it and explain it. And if you can do that, you know, it, it makes you much more hireable than somebody who can just say, I know how to use this skill or, or I have this degree. It's I know how to actually solve the issues that you are facing in your, in your company. So I don't think of the formal education is as big a thing as I think a lot of people think it is. I'm 43. Is it too late for me to start into a new role or a different industry? It really, it's like, uh, yeah, so you're 43, but you don't, you don't want to spend the next, you know, 20 something years of your career doing something that you don't like doing. So it's never too late. You know, you have a lot more industry knowledge, I'm sure, in some specific area 
than anybody else who's applying. So, you know, don't look at it as like my age is a, is the a bad thing. Look at it as your do, your experience and domain knowledge is going to be a huge upside. Um, and I really appreciate the panel for their time today and also all of our attendees.